All right, guys, uh, real quick, let's talk about why you should definitely go to school, especially if you're trying to be a CNA. Uh, now, here in North Carolina and other states, you can um, challenge the, I'm going to say licensure, I don't think it's called licensure, the CNA licensure uh, and become a CNA 1 uh, with just simply paying your fee, taking the test, doing the skills test, and then going on further you can actually do that and become a cna however however that is not your best bet you should definitely go to school to be a cna i did uh, a night program it was something from like october or maybe august till october uh something like that it really wasn't uh very long and it was at nights so it was actually a little bit longer than like a day program however the skills that you learn will help you improve your skills much further. Now, I will agree with what most people say, you learn more on the job than you do in school. I will agree with that, yes. However, you still need that foundation of skills. You know, if I'm coming to work for my very first day and I just now, for the first time, see a bed sore or a pressure ulcer, and uh, I've never seen one before, which, you know, in school they're going to expose you to as much as they can, I'm probably going to freak out a little bit, uh, you know, seeing the back half of somebody that is just not there anymore. Um, it's it's probably going to freak me out, the fact that it's just, there's, there's just nothing there, it's gone. It's, a, it's just an empty hole where a hind end used to be. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to freak out. However, in your CNA program, you're going to at least get the basic rundown of that bed sore, that pressure ulcer. Now, you're probably not going to get hands-on. You're probably not going to do a whole lot with it. You're probably just going to kind of take a look at it and move on about your way. However, you're at least going to know what it is and what to look for. You're going to know, you know, I know in experience, you know, to look for uh, bony prominences, you know, your elbows and your knees and whatnot. When they start turning red, you really need to pay attention to those things. However... You know, if you're challenged your exam, you probably don't know to look for those things. Now, you're probably not going to know what to do with them, you know, in school or out of school. You know, you're going to learn more about that on the job, but you're going to have the basics. You're going to have the foundations as to why you need to report this, who you need to report this to, what you need to do with it. Vitals is another thing. I had, I have had CNAs who really did not care what blood pressures were, just didn't care. Uh, and then I've had CNAs who were like, blood pressure on uh, 123 over there is uh, 180 over 100. You need to take a look at that. That's what I need. In school, they're probably not going to go over everything as to, you know, what's high, what's low. However, they are going to at least give you sort of an example as to, please report this to your nurse. Please report a high blood pressure to your nurse. Don't just let that be. Uh, and you're going to get the know-how, the knowledge of, what to do. One thing that we even spent an entire class on that I do actually remember in CNA school, my CNA program, is um, what to do with a person, with a patient that is being restrained. Um, a lot of people don't know uh, coming into it, unless you kind of went to school, that you really need to let people out of those restraints for a little bit. Uh, you know, this, they'll pull on your wrist or your, or your uh, shoulders, you know, your little bony prominences, your clavicles, your wrist, you know, wherever the restraint may be, they'll pull on them and you can actually tear skin and cause big bad problems. You really need to pay attention to these things. And these are things that if you just challenge that exam, you're probably not even going to know that you need to look for. So definitely, definitely, definitely go to school if you're going to be a CNA and do a program. Don't do a, a non-accredited program, do an accredited program. I always, always, always recommend community colleges because they are always accredited and typically can give you a leg up onto going into nursing school and furthering your education. It's a lot easier and you're more prepared if you go to school just for the workforce. If you don't even care about going to nursing school just for the workforce, you are much more prepared just by taking that CNA program at your local community college. So always, 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 if you are wanting to become a CNA, one, to phlebotomist, whatever it may be, go to an accredited program. I always recommend a community college, but be sure you do it and be sure that you learn as much as you can. I know you're going to get more on the job. However, you're definitely going to get the fundamentals at that program. Like this video, 
Check out this one over here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe over there. Hope it helps. Thank you much.